get through praying, when we get through worshiping, when we get through praising, we got decisions we have to make. Oh God, right now, begin to make me like you, God. Not my will, but Lord, let your will be done. I try to do it my way, but I mess it up, God. But Lord, I need you to break me. Oh God. I need you to break me. Release the fall too out of me, God. I don't mind being broken for the sake of the order. I don't mind being crushed for the sake of the order. God, I've given you my life. I've given you the right to do whatever you want to do in my life, God. But I know that all things work together for the good of those that love God and that are called according to his purpose. Oh, would you praise God if we got purpose? chapter the 30th verse. 
John the third chapter and the 30th verse. Amen? Amen. One scripture, can you believe it? He must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must de decrease. We're going to finish up. We're going to keep going. I don't know if God's going to tell me to stop or not. I've been really enjoying this. I really have. Uh, the psychology of the soul. Today we're going to talk about narcissistic behavior. Narcissistic behavior. If any man speak, let him speak of the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise uh, and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Narcissistic behavior. We're still talking about psychological disorders that sometimes we can have inside of our souls. I want y'all to keep remembering the point of these sermons, the point of these lesson is to uh, get us to understand that things won't always change because you shout. That things won't always change because you came up and got prayer. But but there are sometimes these are disorder, these are disorders that arise in our spirit that did not come up overnight. They're not gonna leave overnight. But what you do in treatment, I've learned that what you do in treatment is that you go to a path to where you change your behavior and your lifestyle and that in, in, in turn changes the that that fix the, that fixes the disorder. And so it's important that we understand narcissism and narcissistic behavior. And I want to say since I've been doing this, I have a credentials in psychology to teach it, but I have not been going that deep into psychology until I started doing these things. And so, and so, so the question is, what is narcissistic behavior? Now I want to tell you something. There's a difference between self-esteem and narcissism. It's a difference. You see, you see, self-esteem represents an attitude built on accomplishments that we've mastered, and a values that we adhere to, and, and, and care we've shown toward others. That, that's what self-esteem is. I, I've accomplished some things. I, I, I've mastered some stuff. I have values about myself. They give me my self-esteem. Certain things I just won't say and won't do. That's my self-esteem. Certain things about me won't come out of my mouth. I, I won't act certain ways. That's my self-esteem. And, and also, it's how I care for other people. You know, it's how I treat people. But narcissism, somebody say narcissism. It's often based on four things. It's a fear of failure or weakness. A focus on self, on oneself. An unhealthy drive to be seen, not to be the best, but to be seen as the best. And a deep-seated insecurity and underlying feeling of inadequacy. Now, what I've learned, I thought narcissism was just about vanity. But it goes deeper than that sometimes. It's sometimes about how we view ourselves and how we project those views to other people. Sometimes if you think that you are a certain way, you project it to people and you think that they think you a certain way, and they don't even know you that well. It's about what's going on inside of you. See, there's nothing wrong with having a healthy sense of self-esteem. There is nothing wrong with, being, with having confidence, but there's something very wrong with being arrogant and overconfident. Amen? Too often we associate narcissistic behavior with simply vanity, but it's more to it than that. It is a feeling, not, it, it, it usually not a feeling of feeling be, being better than others. It is a feeling of being lower than others, and as a result, you behave abnormally to make up for how you really feel on the inside. I'm learning narcissistic people don't have a good view of themselves. They don't have a good view of themselves, and so they, they say things and do things to make themselves look like they really are confident. Narcissism is a disorder that has crept into the minds of the people of God. It is one that many of us ignore, and often it goes undiagnosed, but it is, a crip it is crippling the body of Christ. The spirit of narcissism is crippling us. And until we accurately diagnose this in ourselves and deal with the symptoms, we will miss out on the move of God. How many of y'all know God going to move regardless? Yeah. He's going to move regardless whether we like it, whether we're ready for it, whether we've accepted it or not. God's going to do what he's going to do regardless. Can I tell you something about being inside the house of God? If, if, if certain churches are not ready for the move of God, God is going to go to another church and begin to move there. If you're not ready for the move of God, if you've not gotten yourself ready, God will just use somebody else. I'm talking about that this evening, that, 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 that Mordecai tells Esther. He says, hey, if you don't uh, say what God wants you to say, the deliverance is going to come through someone else. That's what he said. He said, deliverance is going to come. Best, best, best believe that God going to do what he wants to do. He said, but, but at the same time, how do you not know that you were born for such a time as this? 
Oh, I love that. That I was born in November 5th, 1982, because I was born for such a time as the time I was born into. Oh, it's a blessing. So what are the signs of narcissistic behavior? What are the signs? One, a fear of failure or of weakness. A fear of failure or of weakness. We must realize that the only person that made no mistakes is Jesus. We'd be so scared of failure, but the only person I know who did, did, did make any mistakes is Jesus. Failure is an integral part of your journey. Weaknesses are what characterize your humanity. Because you can't do everything. You can't be everything. Can I be real in the house? No, no, no. In, in the flesh, you can't do everything. You can't be everything. That's the truth. You have weaknesses inside your flesh. Some of us right now, we have weaknesses in our eyes, don't we? There's something that's trying to read when we have our glasses on. My, 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 my license says I can't drive without my contacts in. My license says I have a restriction on my contact that says you are so blind. We don't trust you to operate a vehicle without your glasses on. Think about that. That's a weakness, isn't it? That's what makes me human. I'm not perfect in the sense that I have no weaknesses. There are people that won't try to do anything in the church or in their lives because they fear failure so much that they won't even try. Am I being real in the house today? You see, there are people that will never step into anything because they have overestimated the power of their weaknesses and the body is suffering because you were too scared to lunch. Oh, that's real right there. The body is suffering right now because people are too scared to lunch. But they say, Pastor, I see a need. God put it inside my spirit. But yet, I feel so insecure. I have so many weaknesses. I have a fear of failure that I won't even try. And the body is suffering because people won't lunch. I'll preach to myself this morning if I have to, but that's real. See, we think that our inability to step out and attempt great things is due to our humility, but in actuality, it is due to our narcissistic belief that we are too big to fail. You think you're too good to fail. You think you're too good to try something and not make it happen to work every time you do it. That's what the problem is. Your problem is that you are too narcissistic to say, you know what, I tried, I failed, but at least I tried. Oh, see, see, that's one thing about being a pastor. I told, I was talking to my leaders one time in my house, and I was telling them, I said, one thing about me, I'll try it. If God puts it in my spirit, I'm going to try it. I'm not going to always win. I want everything won't stick every time, but I'm going to keep throwing spaghetti at the wall. You know, they say you throw spaghetti at the wall to see if it's going to stick, right? See if it's ready. So I'm going to keep on throwing spaghetti to see what's going to stick. I'm, I'm not too big that I can't have no failure. See, I, 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 that's a narcissistic belief that you think that everything that you do won't work the first time. It's not going to happen. You see, narcissism is about how we view ourselves. We don't want to try because we are afraid of our others going to view our failure. That, Pastor, you tried and it didn't work. Pastor, you want to do this and it didn't work. No, that, that don't matter. See, sister, you tried and it didn't work. But that, that don't matter because I'm not narcissistic enough to believe that I'm Jesus. I'm not so much to believe that I never make any mistakes. You see, if we don't get over our fear of failure, we will never please God. You will fail sometimes, but when you fail trying to do the will of God, it's not a loss, it's a lesson. Yeah. You see, you see, it's a lesson. You see, you try and you found out one more way that it won't work. Yeah. 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 Not being real. You found out one more way it don't work. I was in the military, and I, I, I picked the job, simply for some crazy reasons, but I picked the job, and I had to be an electrical mechanic, and all I can do to a car is put gas in it. That's about it. I can't really do much to a car, and I, I did this, but you know, because I'm, you know, I'm a little adept with the, with the writing, I can pass any written test. I had, if I study hard enough, I can do it. And I said, man, you know, we have a manual, and the manual says to try this, to do this, and do that. And my section sergeant told me, said, Daniel, sometimes you just got to try some stuff and crank it up. I said, what you mean? Because the book says this. He said, I know what the book says, Daniel, but sometimes you just got to try some stuff and crank it up and see what's going to happen. And at least you know it ain't that reason. It ain't that going on with it. It's not that going on with it because you, at least you tried, and now you know what won't work. Oh, that's a, see, yes, people may ridicule you and talk about you, but don't be so much assisted that you find your worth in what people say about you. Your worth comes from God. There are people that try and there are those that criticize. Guess what? Who do you think gets stuff done? The people who try and those who criticize what you try. Who gets stuff done? Oh, ain't that true? You know, you can sit there and say, I'm not going to take the last shot. But guess what? If you never take the last shot, you never make the last shot. 
And she got to understand those things. And don't be a prisoner of your weaknesses. You serve a God that flexes his muscles in the midst of your weaknesses. Can I go to 2 Corinthians 12 and 9? In 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, Paul says, And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect. Oh, y'all better hear this. In weakness, that as soon as you say what you cannot do, that's not beginning to start flexing my muscles. When you say, Lord, I try my best. I put all I can inside of it. That's when God says, I begin to flex my muscles. He said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, would I rather glory in my weakness. Now, that's what Paul says. I glory in the fact that I was born. I couldn't really see that well. But I glory in the fact that God invented glasses. Y'all better hear this. Y'all better hear this. That, that even in my weakness, God made something there. His grace was still sufficient for me. Most glad that I'd rather glory in my, in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You see, I've learned that the only time God rests is when I start telling God what I can't do. So when you keep telling God what you can do, what you can do, you go by yourself. You see, I want God's power to rest on me. I keep telling God, Lord, I can't do this. I learn. And sometimes we got to make ourselves do this and force ourselves to do this. To say, Lord, I can't make this happen. That's when His Spirit rests upon those who are weak. Mm. Am I in the Bible? So, so therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses. For Christ's sake, for when I'm weak, then I am strong. It's when I say, Lord, I can't deal with this. I need you to deal with this. God said, I was waiting for you to shut up a long time ago. I was waiting for you to get to that point in your prayers. You've been praying for an hour, sitting here crying, crying out, trying to intercede. And all you had to do was say, Lord, I can't deal with this. I need you to step in. Oh, y'all ain't heard me inside of here. When you admit weakness, that's when you become strong. See, I know that I have weaknesses, but I serve a God that shows up in the midst of about weaknesses to display his power, I might as well try because the real factor is Jesus, not me. That's the real factor inside of it. It's Jesus, not me. So, so the second thing, the second symptom is a focus on oneself. A focus on, somebody say a focus on self. Can I tell you something? It can always be about you. You see, people are naturally inwardly focused. We are very inwardly focused, aren't we? You see, the first law of nature is self-preservation. Y'all can sit here and say, that's wrong, you know, but that's the truth. We, 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 we think about us first, see? You see, I will take care of me first, and I'm going to take care of you. Are being real? You see, you see, this is not the will of God, though. And I, I know, see, God comes against our nature. That's why the flesh and the spirit fight against each other. Because that's not the will of God. Philippians 2 and 4 says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also to the things of others. It's Bible. Let me know my other now. That's Bible. So, so the Bible says, don't, so God is trying to tell us, don't just watch and pray for you, but watch and pray for others. See, the church would be a much better place if we became people that look out for other people. If we believe that God is going to take care of us, our prayers should be primarily focused on others then. That means you should spend 10% of your time praying about you and 9% of your time praying about somebody else. Because you tell people that, you know, God got me. He's going to take care of me. He got this. So, therefore, you need to be praying for somebody else then, don't you? See, see we, we shouldn't be only worried about our kids. Yeah? I, I, I had, uh, you said, I was thinking about this with my, my son. And people say this, and I say it too, you know, don't mess with my kids, you know. I'm really, I'm really careful about my kids. But God when he said, Daniel, you got to be careful about everybody's kids. You gotta be looking out for everybody's kids. We we, we, we we say that all the time and we, we, we do these things, but it's not so much that I want the teacher messing with my child. I don't want her messing with nobody's child. I'm looking out for everybody's child because the class we got to think about that. We should be praying for everybody's kids. Can I tell you something? If we spent time praying for that kid who's in the game, we wouldn't have to spend so much time praying for our children we safe when they go outside those no places. Can I be real with you? If you spend some time with those people that you think are dangerous children and dangerous kids, if you pray for them, then you want to pray so all your children go out there because we'd already got all this stuff covered. Amen? See, that child needs somebody praying for him too. He may be overlooked. You see, he needs some role model and some good advice too. But we are so wrapped up in us and ours that sometimes we're not concerned with the world. But Jesus is for everybody. I had to learn that, man. Jesus is for everybody. See, the church will complain that the world is so evil, but it's evil because the church only prays for itself and its unsaved loved ones. We say it all the time, don't we? But what about the unsaved unloved ones? What about the unsaved 
save my loved ones? What about the ones that, 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 that people have pushed aside and, and nobody cares about them? What about them? Do they need prayer too? I believe they need prayer too. I believe we pray a lot for them. We want to spend so much time praying for Oh, y'all ain't heard this. Can I, can I go to the Bible and, and back this up? In Isaiah 56 and 7, it says, Even them, Isaiah 56 and 7, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. House of prayer, right? Uh, he says, Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. So whenever I tell you, let me tell you this, whenever I tell you that God only blesses Jews, he only loves them, and that's his chosen people, and then we just out here. No, no, no. The Bible says even the Jews, when he had the house, that's in Isaiah, they were supposed to be praying for the Gentiles. Y'all ain't heard that. He said, no, 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 I know, I know I've chosen you, you're my chosen people, but it's your job to pray for those who are outside. And the same thing that Jesus comes back in the book of Matthew and quotes this same scripture. He said, my house should be called a house of prayer for all people. So guess what God is telling us? That while we're inside of here, we should be praying for those outside and there. But what will happen? We focus on self. We focus on self. And God said, as long as you focus on self and can take care of you, then guess what? You're taking my job now. Because now, because you want to take care of you, why, why, why should I take care of you? Can, can I be real? Can, can, can I come to your house with this one? Sometimes we get so focused on taking care of what I have that we don't ever give to anybody. When God forbid we give to the church. We don't give to the church. We don't give to anybody. And guess what happens? We only got what we only have what we have. We cut off blessings that way. Can I be real? We cut off blessings because you have put in your heart, God, I'm going to take care of me. So God says, if you going to take care of you, then I'm not going to take care of you. What you need me for? We cut off blessings sometimes because God said, you know what? You should have gave that person that money. You should have gave that person that money. You, you should have let them have that. You, you should have did it for that person. But we think so much about ourselves. Churches sometimes are inwardly focused. Can I tell you something? That's why I'm very intent on us getting some kind of, uh, uh, getting a lot of outreach because I don't want to go to heaven and God said you only took care of your budget. I'm just being real in the house. God says, you know what? I put in the word that when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was in jail, you didn't visit me. Can I, can I give y'all something? I'm going to say this is on Facebook, but this is true. This ain't the truth of the matter. This is why sometimes we see uh, churches of the other persuasion, of uh, the lightest skin persuasion. That's why they're so big. And we can sit in here and shout and say, we have some great uh, services. And we have some great anointing. We can shout, we can prophesy, we can speak in tongues, but we don't give nobody a dollar. And when you go to those churches, they have outreach ministries inside of there. And guess what? Money is coming in. Amen. Then we go to Life Church when they say that, you know, we have a situation sometimes when we want to send kids somewhere and people say, well, they don't got enough money. Somebody in the house will say, my kids are grown. I can pay for a couple of kids. We ain't think like that, do we? My, my kids are grown. Oh, man, say, you know what? I'm blessed enough. I can give Tyler and Caleb $10 on the trip. But guess what? Maybe somebody else struggling. I'm going to pay for two more kids, whatever you want to go to. We don't think like that, though, do we? I was in their life church, and they were saying how they didn't even do fundraisers. Tell me no fundraisers. They said, you know, we have X amount of kids who go to camp every year. They said, we have quite a few kids who come from bad backgrounds, who poor backgrounds, who cannot pay. And what we do, we say, look, we're taking 100 kids off. We need 40 kids tuition to be paid to go on this camp. And we just tell people, we got 40 people who need to go, and they just write right checks. They don't say, I'm going to pick this kid or that kid. They say, I'm going to give it to whatever kid needs it. And they have a model. They say, whatever we need, it's in the house. And God blesses them. Oh, y'all better than that. That is true. You have to think outwardly. Somebody say, think outwardly. Yeah. Let me get out of your way. You know, so that the, the narcissism is an unhealthy drive to be seen as the best. To be seen as the best. You see, there is nothing wrong with having a drive to be the best. I tell people, I'm going to preach, I want to be the best preacher I can. I want to be the, I, you, you always strive to be the best. You should always strive to be the best. However, there is something wrong with an unhealthy drive to be seen as the best. Can I be real? Because when you're trying to be seen as the best, you won't work while you try to cover up things that you messed up on. Try to show yourself to be something that you're really not sometimes. You try to cover up for things. See, I can be the best whether you see it or not. 
You see, you see, being seen as, as, as being seen as, as something is not as important as being something. I'm gonna say it one more time. Being seen as something is not as important as being something. You must be released from the desire to be seen. Some of us would rather look wealthy than to be wealthy.